Hello, footy fans, and welcome back to the Chip and Chase podcast on this lovely Wednesday afternoon, ready to rip and tear into everything that is in the Supercoach realm, looking back at round 22 and looking ahead to round 23. Start of head-to-head finals this week, so we will be doing a little bit of a chat around the head-to-head side of things, more than just the overall rankings. Of course, as you guys know, I'm more of an overall player, but I am in a couple of head-to-head cash comps that I do care about, even if you're not in a cash comp. If you're just in a comp for bragging rights, some of the stuff that we can discuss may be um, quite helpful to you. So we will be talking a little bit about the head-to-head side of things as well as overall, trying to cater to everyone. Um, But once again, this one is recorded up on the YouTube channel. So if you're listening on an audio platform, head over to the YouTube. It's a better place to be. See the face cam, see everything that we got up on screen. Connect a little bit more. If you're a visual learner, it's really great for that side of things as well. Uh, But for those of you who are watching on the YouTube channel, you'd be able to see up on screen how we went in round 22. So a score of 1,376 for the round, the top 1% of scores. In fact, it was 1,708th highest score of the week out of all super coaches. So really good week for us, which is exactly where we sort of wanted to be. Obviously, we were in a tough little period there where we weren't making any moves up the rankings. In fact, we're actually sliding a fair bit. And uh, my plan for all my trades and whatnot and holding them and, and keeping them for the back end I said, nah, bugger it, we need to make moves now. And we went quite hard, a lot harder than I typically would, where I've got the three trades remaining, but this is the push that we needed to get us into a decent ranking. Uh, So we'll hopefully keep those. I'm hoping to keep at least two. Uh, We might be using two trades this week, which would bring us to one, but I'd like to keep um, two trades and we'll have to discuss that a little bit further. But yeah, that means we're into a total score of 24,825th, so the top 4% of all players at the moment, uh, and a season rank of 5,680th, uh, which means we went up 2,393 ranks for the week. So really happy with it. Let's get into the actual team, see how they all went and discuss them. So at hooker, Harry Grant, 119 points. Love to see that from the man. Uh, he hasn't really been hitting those ceilings. I think this is only his second ton of the season. Uh, we have owned him for both of them, thankfully. Uh, but he has been quiet. Last week, he scored like 57 with a try. So I was a bit worried about his output. Ended up playing the 80 despite Tyron Wishart being on the bench. So I'm not sure if there were any injuries or whatnot that played a part in that or if it was just the actual game plan to get him through 80 minutes. But 119 points. Happy for that. A little bit worried about Storm resting him back into the season because our other hooker, Jake Simpkin, who didn't play on the bye, he also hasn't been named this week, which is great for an AE side of things. But a little bit scary that if Harry Grant goes down, we don't have a backup now. We can either use AEs at that point or use one of our remaining trades to trade Harry. But let's hope that that it doesn't come to that. Let's hope Harry gets named for the rest of the season and we can just keep running with that. As we mentioned, Simpkin did not play. No points from him. Our front rowers, Adam Fenua Blake, 55 points now. You know, went up against the Eels. Everyone sort of thought, great week if you didn't own him to bring him in and get those potential attacking stats. Did not come. Warriors uh, put in a really poor performance and the Eels put in a, a great performance and, and beat them to the pulp there. So no attacking stats for Fenua Blake, but 55 points we're pretty happy with when he's not getting those 100 plus scores. So happy with that. Uh, Viliami Fafita, the other front row we played this week, we put the captaincy on him, which meant we could loop uh, one of our other players, which if you watched last week's episode, you would have known who that is, but otherwise we'll get to them in a bit. But Fafita, our other front rower, Terrell May, 60 points uh, on the bench. Didn't play him. He did get bumped up minutes with uh, Lindsay Collins failing a HIA. So now they're on the bye, and Lindsay Collins and Jared Warrior Hargraves will be back the week after. So we'll have to see what Terrell's output is. Uh, as you guys know, I'm pretty keen on keeping him, especially with Payne Haas going down now. There's not too many fantastic front rowers out there. So I'm pretty happy to keep Terrell May and see what happens there. Um, we didn't play him for his 60 points regardless, but... The game's a game. 46 points from Josh Curran. He was going to be our starting front rower. But there was a little bit of doubt heading into the game if he would play. And then he did pick up an injury in the game. An AC joint. So that's your shoulder, collarbone area right up around here. I've done that before. Uh, it's not it's not, not the most fun of injuries to have. Really hard if you're trying to make tackles and get through the work that Josh Curran does. But he spent a bit of time off the field only punched out of 46, which ended up being our AE score, lowest score on our bench. 
uh, which is pretty darn good as an AE regardless. So we'll have to see. He's a bit of doubt heading into this week as well. So we'll have to talk a little bit about what we can do in that front row position. But let's move into our second row forwards. David Fafida, 59 points from him. In a game that the Titans absolutely smashed the Broncos, I would have expected Fafita to pick up a few points. Not the case. Uh, yeah, they, they just kept going to the right. Jojo Fafita on the right-hand wing had a field day. No uh, no attacking stats for Fafita. But if he's punching out 59 with no attacking stats, we're pretty darn happy with that. So, yeah, happy to see that score. Angus Crichton, 75 points from him. He got a bit of a try assist. I think he got awarded the try assist with the offload to Daniel Tupo on the left-hand side. Great offload that was, um, which is great. 75 points, which is where we sort of wanted Angus to be. Hopefully, he can push higher than that coming out from the bye, but we'll have to see. Regardless, happy to own him and get those 75 points. Britton Nikita, 44. This one's a bit of an interesting one. Sharky's just, they get no ball on their right-hand side with Nico Hines out, which sucks, not only as a Nikita owner, but as a uh, Jesse Ramian owner. Um... Yeah, no attacking stats coming. I still believe that he'll get some in the Sharkies' run home. So happy to still own him. But 44, not the best, not the worst, though. Uh, Hamole Olakawatu did not play. Bo Furmore got one of our reserve tags and punched out 92 points with a try. You'll love to see it. I'm sorry I ever doubted Bo Furmore or I was ever looking to trade him because he's a gun. And uh, he's now injured with a um, bruised kidney, I believe it is. So looking to miss, I think it's two weeks there. Definitely not really one of the people I'm looking to sell. I'm happy to hold him for the season, especially with the, the center wing uh, duel as well. Jack DeBellin, our other second rower at the moment, 57 points from him. He didn't get a reserve tag, but it's really good to see a bit of a return to form for him, punching out that sort of score. We will be looking to play him this week with the, the injuries and, and restings and... Uh, what do you call it? The the players on the buy, the Roosters players on the buy. So hopefully he can punch out a similar score this week when we actually play him. Into the halfbacks, Nathan Cleary, 90 points. Uh, pretty lucky. Well, not so much lucky. It is the class of the player that got him there. But he was looking for a decent-ish quiet one, uh, which, you know, for the top captain of the round would have been decent for me because a lot of people sort of would have got less from their captains. But in the end, 90 points. He, he sort of bailed everyone out with that great try to beat the Knights, which, you know, that's the class of the player. I'm not going to hold that against him. Uh, I was hoping he'd go a little bit lower despite the fact I owned him just because I had the um, vice captain on someone else who I looped. But 90 points, you're happy to see it, especially if you did captain him. Sam Walker, 105 as our other, another one of our reserves, our reserve halfback. Love that. That's two tons in the last two weeks for Sam Walker. Heads into the bye now. Hopefully he can come back and keep those tons up after the bye. But yeah, played some great, great footy. The chip and chase, you know, like the brand, he brought it out. Love love to see it from Sam Walker. And it's really vindicating my decision to bring him in a few weeks ago. So love to see that. Jaden Campbell, however, 45 points. Again, similar mold to David Fafita where Titans put on a clinic and they scored so many points. But he just couldn't get his hand in any of them. So he also missed a fair few goals. You know, when we brought him in, he was slotting them over from everywhere, every which point on the field. Couldn't miss, essentially. And then, uh, yeah, missed a fair few, even some easier ones for a man of his class as well. So 45. Then again, if 45 is the lowest we're going to see from a Jaden Campbell, we're pretty happy with that. I still think he's probably the best 5'8 to own for the run home. He's hard to get to at his price point, though. So I'm really happy I got to him when I did. Jai Gray, the other 5'8 in the in the team at the moment. 93 points. Now, we sat him. We didn't give him a reserve or whatnot. So, left a few points out there. We could have went even higher this week, but we're not going to complain about that. Was never really looking to play Jai Gray against the Sharkies. But good to see that he can punch out those scores. Uh, Rabbitohs only managed to score six points. He was the sole try scorer in that side. He just does it all for the Rabbitohs at the moment. So, you know, if I have to play him at different circumstances, I'm not going to be too scared about it anymore so yeah good on Jai Gray for that into our center wing position now as you guys can see there is our vice captain Valentine Holmes you would have known if you tuned in last week but yep we brought him in as one of our only trades and we put the vice captain on him and after even about half time I think he was on like 80 80 something at half time I'm pretty sure I already was looping by that point I just knew he was on for a massive one 136 points doubled to 272 
fantastic stuff from from Val. And yeah, the reason we brought him back into this side, we did sell him maybe six, seven, eight weeks ago. But it's good to see him back on the side. It just feels right owning Valentine Holmes. Dominic Young, 29, a bit of an opposite end of the spectrum here. Look, a very similar mold to the other Titans players, but this time for the Roosters. Roosters put on a lot of points, and Dominic Young just couldn't get a sniff of any of those attacking stats. He did come off injured as well, so, you know, that would have played a part in that, which is why he only scored the 29. Now, he's projected to be out for two to four weeks, so it's an interesting one there. Something that I'm going to have to keep a bit of an earmark on, whether or not he becomes a trade-out. A lot of people are flocking to trade him out. I still sort of want to own him for the run home. It's just whether or not I can get through this one week with my lack of roosters. I have the depth in every other week. This week might just test the, test the troops a bit, but we'll have to see when we get to our trades department what to do with him. But 29 points, not ideal, but again, everyone's in a very similar boat owning him. Jesse Ramian, 57 points. Now, this one, I believe, had a try assist. Uh, potentially line break or line break assist as well. So it's not just the old 55 and base that he's been producing. However, he did spend another 15 minutes off the field with a HIA. Um, so that one, that one hurt a little bit. Um, would love to see him get more than that to this day for, the, for, for this season. He still only punched out the one ton, the 100 plus score. I'd love to see a couple more, at least one more out of him for the last couple of weeks just to Really hammer it home because he's still so lone, so lowly owned. I think at 2%, maybe 3 I'd love to be one of those only sort of players owning him and getting those, uh, getting the benefits from his top scores. Uh, Greg Marju, however, 47. All in base. Again, this is against the Penrith Panthers. Didn't expect attacking stats. We didn't exactly have a plethora of options to play in the center wing this week. So he was always going to get a go. I figured if they were to score a try, it'd be through him. Now, they did score a couple of tries and they weren't through him. But I'm pretty confident in him in the run home to jag some attacking stats and a few tries. And 47 in base against the best team in the comp. You've got to be pretty happy with that. Uh, the rest of our center wingers, Ruben Garrick did not play on the bye and injured. Ronaldo Mulatalo did not play as he's injured. And Casey McLean, 76. He also got one of our reserve tags. So we've got to bank those 76 points, which is great. He's proved to be a great pickup, not just for the cash generation that we freed up, but he's a playing option every week with the Panthers at the moment. Their attack is humming, and he's looking really good out there, Casey McLean. So love to see the 76 from him. Into the fullbacks, Reese Walsh, 78. Now, he had that by about bloody 15 minutes. He was absolutely tearing the Titans to shreds. Then the uh, Broncos just capitulated, and I think he might have went down in points from then on. Just They moved him into the front line to defend at 5'8", when Ezra Mann left the field. And he just missed tackle after tackle. Wasn't the best for Reese Walsh, but a 78 points, again, at face value, not knowing that what, what went into that, we're pretty happy with. I would have liked to see a little bit more. I'm also, you know, when I brought him in, I was so confident the Broncos run home. I am no longer confident in the Broncos. I am worried about them. At the same time, though, it seems like Reese Walsh is doing absolutely everything for them. So I'm still decently happy to own him. I'm just... Not convinced he'll match up to the Tom Trebojeviches and James Tedesco's of the world. But 78 points, we'll take it this week. That is more than Tedesco and Trebojevic, who one of them was on the bye and the other just went quiet. So, got to, got to bank those points when we can. Kel Ido, the other fullback at the moment, punched out an 87. A try and maybe even, I can't remember if he got the try assist, but he did... In NRL standpoint, he had a try assist in there as well. But 87 from him, you love to see that as well. So that is how the team went. few things to look at heading into this week. Now, as we said, the Roosters on the bye. It's going to play a big part in not just my team, but I'm assuming a lot of your teams as well. It's a difficult one to sort of navigate around because you want to keep these Roosters. Like, you don't want to rush into things on a one-week play where they're all, we're all out. You want to have them for the back end. They've still got a good draw, and they're still playing really good attacking footy, which is what's rewarded most in Supercoach. So we'll have to discuss that. But before we get into that, let's have a look over at the teamless changes heading into round 23. So for the first game, the Rabbitohs and the Storm. Cody Walker has been named to return this one, but is still in a lot of doubt. I'm not convinced he does play this one. In saying that, I'm not sure who they play if they don't because um, Dion Tauper, who who replaced him at halfback, uh, he also picked up an injury and is out. Dean Hawkins is on standby, actually, 18th man. So he's only just coming back from injury. They'll probably rush him in, but yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. Not a whole lot else for the Rabbitohs. 
Keon Kalo and Matangi still at lock forward. They did give him a bit of a rest last week, though, the Rabbitohs, so maybe a bit tough for the old um, Keon owners. But they go up against the Melbourne Storm now. Not much going on for the Storm either. Actually, the big one here, Nelson Asofa Solomona. He's pushed into lock forward, and Trent Liero, who's been playing lock all season, goes into second row with Eli Katoa out. Now, Eli Katoa was a weird one. He did, I think, leave the field, but not much was said of it um, last week. So... Yeah, not sure how long he's out for, but it's a tough one for owners. Definitely someone that you really wanted to keep for the back end of the season. Uh, but yeah, interesting to note there. Uh, yeah, not sure what you do with Ellie. You'll have to just keep an eye on when he's due back. Let's move into the next game, the Titans and the Sharkies. Titans, they have not made... Oh no, the big change, of course, is Bo Fumor out with that bruised kidney. That's a killer. Wanted to play him every week, and now he's out for, I think it's two weeks. Uh, might be, I'm not sure. Bruce Kidney is a hard one to really get a read on. You don't hear that injury going around too often. But he's replaced in the second row by Cleese Haas, who's not that super coach relevant. It's just more super coach relevant if you're a Bo Fumor owner like myself and what we're going to have to do there. Sharkies, the big one here is that Braden Trindle's out, which means they've moved Blake Braley to halfback, Cam McInnes to hooker, Jack Williams to lock, and Jaden Beryl comes onto the game onto the bench. Now I'm not convinced this is how they line up. I'd assume they'd actually play Jaden Beryl at hooker, uh, leave Cam McInnes at lock. Blake Braley, yeah, he'll probably play halfback. Or maybe not. Maybe what they're gonna do is just let Blake Braley defend. Uh I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they do here. I don't know if Blake Braley is really going to play halfback in attacking structures is the only thing. When they played the Storm earlier this season and they did a similar thing, I don't think Blake Braley actually played halfback. I think he defended at halfback in defense, but he he played from hooker in offense. I can't recall though, so we'll have to see what happens there. Not sure what relevance it is on those players. I'm not sure you own those sort of players or a Braden Trindle. Maybe there's a few owners of Braden Trindle, to be fair. Uh, not sure how long he's out for, but I'd probably look to part ways anyway, try and get to a, a really good halfback or a pod buy that we have listed later in our trade section, which we'll, we will get to. Uh, beyond that, it's just a little bit of a worry for the Sharkies going up a red hot red hot Titans side. So I'm, I'm going to be pretty confident in playing Titans players this week. I'm going to sneeze. All right, moving on to the next game. We have the Parramatta Eels taking on the Penrith Panthers. Now, not a whole lot going on here for the Eels. Actually, they haven't made a single change to the team that beat the Warriors, but going up, going up against the Panthers is going to be a, a lot more of a hard ask. For the Panthers, Dane Laurie returns at fullback, which pushes uh, Isaac, is it Isaac or Isaiah? Uh, Isaiah Iongi out of the side. Beyond that, not really too much going on for the Penrith Panthers. In fact, may even be a little bit uh, of an upgrade. Now, Yongi was great on debut, but hopefully they can bounce back. Not that they lost, but they're going to want to put on a big one here. Eels have been the bogey side for the Panthers in recent seasons, but I'm not sure they really have the class anymore, at least in this game, to really get it over them. So be loading up on Panthers players. Next up, Raiders and the Seagulls. Now, nothing really going on here for the Raiders. The late change that they did last week was Ethan Strange got a rest and they played Adam Cook. Now, instead, Adam Cook has now dropped back to the bench and uh, Danny Levi is out of the side and Ethan Strange is back at 5'8". But that's the only change for them. For the Seagulls, they were coming off the bye, but they've got a few changes regardless. Lehi Hopawate, my king from this season... Comes back onto the wing, which moves Tommy Talao back into the centers. And Jason Saab and Ruben Garrick are also named to back up from their injury sustained before the bye. Taniela Paseca, also back from injury in the front row, partnering Nathan Brown. I didn't realize Nathan Brown was starting. Uh, the other one here, Hamoleola Kawatu, back from his suspension, which is great for people who held on to him. And Lachlan Croker back after a lengthy layoff with a HIA, or I say a HIA, with concussion symptoms that have been lingering for a long time. So fantastic to see him back in the first grade side and starting Gordon Chan come tongs on the bench. And as we said, uh, Jake Simpkin is out of the side, which is ideal for me as an owner. I don't really want him as my, uh, as my AE. Let's move into the next. Oh, sorry. The other game, uh, the other man out for the Raiders is that, Zach Hosking is out with another shoulder injury, which is gutting because he's a gun. And Atamodiota uh, comes onto the bench for them. Cowboys and Broncos, 
Not much here at all, to be honest. Ruben Cotter just returning from his HIA. Helam Luke, he's also been named, um, but we'll have to see if he actually does play after the head knock. Uh, beyond that, not a whole lot. Uh, for the Broncos, there are a lot of changes here. Good news is Reese Walsh is still playing at fullback or named at fullback. Josh Rogers comes in at 5'8 for Ezra Mam. Uh, Josiah Carapani starts on the wing for Corey Oates, who has been dropped, which I'm a massive Corey Oates fan, and I appreciate what he's done for the club. Yeah, he was poor, and I think he's been poor for the last couple of weeks. So I think he's copped a bit of harsh criticism for the rest of this season. Like There have been a lot of games where I don't think he's deserved that criticism. But, yeah, last week I probably would have looked to maybe move him out of the side. And, yeah, maybe the end of Corey Oates in the Broncos. But that's a discussion for an NRL video, not a super coach video. Uh, for the rest of them, Xavier Willison starts at front row with Payne Haas. Suffering that Liz Frank injury rules him out of the season, which is unfortunate for Payne and unfortunate for owners. But that's sort of the carnage that I really want to unfold as someone who doesn't own Payne Haas. Uh, not much else on there. Tristan Saylor is on the bench with Blake Moser as well. So a little bit bench there uh, with Kobe Hetherington and Martin Tapau as well. Dragons Bulldogs up next. Now there's nothing of note for the Dragons here to my knowledge. I think it's the exact same side. Uh, for the Bulldogs, have they made any changes? Not at all, actually. Um, yeah, so two, two sides that got the job done last week and they've kept the faith there. Dolphins and Warriors are the next. The Dolphins, they do get Cody Nicarima and Tavita Pangai Jr. back for this game, who were late outs last week. The other one is Jermaine Sarko, who has been named despite the uh, awkward-looking injury he picked up last week. So really good for owners of Jermaine Sarko. For the Warriors, uh, not a whole lot here. Roger Tuivasa-Shek moves into the centers. Mawala Graham Taufer drops out, and Edward Corsi starts on the wing. And that's sort of about it for the Warriors as well. Uh, moving into the Knights and the Tigers, the last game of the week. Not a whole lot going on here for the Knights as well. They've kept Phoenix Crossland at halfback, which means Jaden Braley as your big minute hooker. Really good for owners of Braley. Sort of wish I kept him, but I don't know. Jake Simpkin, he, he served me well. Uh, and the Tigers, Aiden Caesar returns at halfback, which is dearly needed for them. Adam Doohy returns into the centers with uh, the... Papua New Guinean player whose name I can't, Justin Olam out with surgery to both of his knees, which is pretty hefty what he's going on there. But he was also going to be suspended for three weeks, I think it was, regardless. Beyond that, not a whole lot. So, trade talks. Before we get into what I'm doing and the pod buys of the week, let's look at what everyone else is doing this week. So, the most traded out player is Payne Haas, which makes sense. Uh, really sucks for those who brought him in, but you do have to part ways. He's at such a high price tag. You just got to move him on. Uh, Dominic Young, the next most traded out. Now, we discussed a little bit about him, but let's talk about it now. It's a, I believe it's a two to four week injury. Now, the buy is thrown in there anyway, so there's one week. If you can deal with him being out potentially one or two more weeks, I advise a hold because the Roosters have a really good draw and he's such a good player in Supercoach this season. Now, I also don't mind the sell. It's something that I'm tossing up myself whether or not to keep him or sell him. Um, there are some good options. Notably, Zach Lomax is someone I'm really interested in. They're almost a straight swap in their price. So something to look at there. I don't know. It all depends on your teams and your situations. If you're looking head to head and you need that extra number, Dom Young may be a sell. If you're looking overall and you don't have too many trades left in the bank and you want the quality, he's only going to miss a couple of weeks. If you have the depth to cover that and he comes back in a couple of weeks' time, I'd advise a hold, but it's very team-dependent and focus-dependent. Uh, as I said, if you're an overall player, maybe you keep or maybe you don't, depending on trades. If you have six, seven, eight trades left, you get rid of him, uh, and you can even bring him back if you, if you want to. If you're down to a few, like any less than four, it's, it's a tough one. But again, head-to-head uh, -head focus, I'd probably look to move him on and, and make a big play there. Because if you're in an elimination final and you're head-to-heads this week, you can't really afford to have someone of that much money on the bench. Like, already missing the rest of the Roosters is fair enough. You, everyone's going to be in that boat. But maybe sell Dom Young and pick up a great player for a one-week play or even the rest of the season, like Zach Lomax that I mentioned. So that's my thoughts on Dom Young. Uh, James Tedesco, next most sold. Doesn't make sense. Do not sell Tedesco. He's the best Fullback and super coach, him and Tom Trebojevic are the best for the run home. I own neither. I'd love to own either of them. So 
Don't sell James Tedesco. Eli Katoa, next most sold, sort of makes sense. Uh, don't really know how long he's out for. I'm sure word will come out about that. Definitely get in contact with NRL Physio. He'll probably help you out there. Um, but depending on how long he's out for, maybe a sell. Uh, if it's only the one week, I'd be reluctant to sell. I'd want to hold. They've got a decent draw. He's a gun. I'd probably keep. But yeah, it's all, again, team dependent. Ronaldo Militalo, next most sold. And we won't really touch on the players after that. Um, but Ronaldo, that makes sense. I'd still be selling. You could hold. He's meant to be back for the last two weeks of the season. But again, decent amount of money. You could get a solid player in. And uh, if you're like me and you're doing what I'm about to do, the whole him to Kalen Ponga via duels, then that sort of just makes sense, doesn't it? So Ronaldo makes sense as a sell. The top five most traded in players. Joseph Tarpany is number one. A lot of people looking to move Haas straight to him in that front row position. I actually like it. Now, I haven't been massive on Tarpany all season. I just think he's been the fourth or fifth string front row forward all season. But now, with Haas down, Terrell May not performing the way he was and on the buy, it's not like you can bring him in. I think Tarpany's the go. He's been really good of late too. 98 points against the Bulldogs, 71, 60, 68 before that. Jeez, he hasn't got a score below 49. No, he had a 39 in round two when they obviously had him on less minutes. But has essentially has got one score below 50 all season. That is actually kind of ridiculous. So I actually really like a Joseph Tarpany trade in. Raiders are technically still a shot for the finals. They're going to be wanting to win every game. That involves keeping Tarpany, your best players, on the field for longer. So I uh, really like it. Yep, love the Tarpany trade in for Payne Haas. Callum Ponga, next most traded in. Guilty as charged. I'll be doing that myself. It all makes sense. Really happy that he uh, dropped the cash, and we can do him in one hit as well. Valentine Holmes, next most traded in. Now, this gets interesting. So Valentine obviously just went ham against the Tigers. He's due to make a lot of cash with a minus 18 break even. He does come up against the Broncos, who haven't been great. You'd expect Broncos to get up for this sort of Queensland derby, but honestly, I don't really know with the Broncos anymore this season. The thing with Val is he's still got a buy to come, so he'll go into this game against the Broncos. Then he has Canberra Raiders next, so two good matchups, well, decent-ish matchups. Then he has the buy and then Melbourne and Bulldogs to finish the season. And at 600, almost 700K, I wouldn't do it. Last week was the time to get on a Valentine, so you could have maximized on that Tigers performance, which I did, and I'm happy to own him for the rest of the season. Like, he's not going to go awful, but I wouldn't be picking him up at the price at this point, and with a buy to come. I'd be, again, targeting players like Zach Lomax. So if you're someone who's looking at Valentine Holmes, maybe it's just for head-to-head -head finals again and you really want to win this week. But again, I'd be looking for more pod plays and I really like Zach Lomax. There are other ones out there. Center wings are, there's a plethora of options in center wing. Valentine Holmes, not my favorite trade in this week for the reasons as listed. Uh, Cameron Munster, the next most trade in, 535K he's down to. He dropped almost 70K. That is so good for Cameron Munster. I could do Jai Gray to him in one hit almost. That is mental. Now, Storm have a really good draw to finish, I believe. Where are we? They've got Rabbitohs. Oh, Panthers are the week after. But then again, Cameron Munster normally stands up in good big games. It's actually not the best draw. They have Dolphins, Cowboys, and Broncos next. So three, um, three Queensland teams straight after that. I don't hate it, though. I think at the price and what we know that Cameron Munster can achieve, I, I like the trade, no matter who he's versing. Again, he's sort of someone that I'm not really ever scared to play in the, the tough games or the, or the weaker games. Sometimes he performs his best when he's up against the best opposition. That's just the big game player that Cameron Munster is. So I do like that as a trade at his price point. And Tom Trebojevic, the fifth most traded in, makes sense, sort of. He's at a really high price point. Uh, obviously, it would have been a couple of weeks ago would have been the time to get him before he went up huge. But coming back from that buy, the uh, Manly still have a crazy draw, don't they? Uh, season stats. Yeah, they go, yeah, wow. Raiders, Warriors, Tigers, Bulldogs, Sharks. So a couple, the last two might be difficult, but also teams could be resting by then. Then again, Manly could be resting by then if they win all these games. So... It's a tough one. 
he is probably the best fullback to own for the run home, but he's also at a really high price point. So, you know, do with that what you will. Again, if you're also looking for head-to-head sort of focused areas, if your opponent owns Tom Trebojevic, ah, oh, it's really tough. Would you want to match him with a Tom Trebojevic or do you want to try and go something else? Maybe Tom Trebojevic isn't the player that you want to antipod. I'm doing it, but I also just couldn't afford it and I had my plan set out. But um, yeah, it's a really tough one. Again, team sort of oriented and head-to-head finals and overall oriented as well. But I'm never going to knock someone for bringing in Tom Trebojevic. I just think he's at a really high price point. If you can do it, fair play to you, but I can't do it, so I'm not doing it personally. Uh, Beyond that, not going to touch on too many. Mitch Barnett, the next most traded in, makes sense for Payne Haas, but again, too high of a price point for me to do it. Zach Lomax, we've talked about, love that. Uh, Harry Grant, next most traded in. I wouldn't be doing it at this point of the season unless you're losing a hooker. I can't imagine who that'd be, though. Um, I think he's just chasing last week's points, and he could put them on. Again, it is against South this week, but every chance that he gets rested late in the season. Olaquatu next. I mean, makes sense bringing him in, probably via Jules for Payne Haas and Samuel Afanu. I wouldn't be bringing Afanu in. Uh, I don't hate... Mm. I sort of regret regret selling him over Terrell May, um, but that's all hindsight. I wouldn't be bringing him in because the Tigers still have a buy in 26, I believe, I think. So, yeah, you'll miss a game there, which can be quite hard. He's dual. He's at a decent price. I don't know. Just personally, not for me. Right. Let's get into the pod buys segment of this podcast. Here it is. Best buys, round 23, point of difference players. Once again... If you're not following along and watching this one on the YouTube and you're just listening on audio, this is uploaded to the Instagram. So if you want to go and have a look at all these stats and what we're talking about, really worth having a look at. There's some great, great insight here. Very much the stuff you want to know if you're considering buying players. So I highly encourage you, though, (laughs) those of you who are listening on an audio platform to go over to the Instagram and show this some love as well. Um, But yeah, get around it. Let's start with our first player. Sean Johnson, uh, look, as you guys know, Sean Johnson, well, maybe you don't know, but Sean Johnson is my favorite player. We put the post up on him a couple of days ago, uh, yesterday even, about his retirement, and it's, uh, yeah, gutting. A few, few tears were shed, I'll, I'll, I'll admit, but um, in terms of super coach, maybe there's a little bit of bias coming in here, but I'll present you my argument for him regardless. Do you believe in fairy tales? If you answered yes to that question, then look no further than Sean Johnson. He's been a staple in the halfback position in Supercoach for a long, long time, coming off a 78-point average in 2024 and 10.60-plus averaging seasons in his career, and at only $442,000, he's very cheap for the pedigree of player. After announcing his retirement earlier this week, the Warriors will be looking to send him out a winner, so expect them to put up a fight in all of the remaining games. The round 27 buy hurts his case big time, but if you have the traders to get him in and out, or if you're needing something different for round one of head-to-head finals, then he's worth consideration. Come on, how about one more ride for old time's sake? I really want to do it. If I, I'm not going to, but I really want to. If my halfbacks weren't Sam Walker and Nathan Cleary, I'd do it. Just, I wouldn't even care about how I finish this season. I'm still tempted to do a Sam Walker to him now, just... Like it is, it'll be the last opportunity I get to own Sean Johnson. And sometimes you just want to, sometimes it's more than the winning super coach or winning your head to head final. Sometimes it's the vibe and, and owning him just, we know what he can do. They do have some decently tough matchups coming up. They're not incredibly difficult by the, by any stretch of the, I'm struggling today by any stretch of the imagination. But Dolphins, I expect them to win. I don't know. It's it's a tough one. It is it is in Queensland. But I think with the emotion riding high of him announcing his retirement and uh, the embarrassment of the performance they put up against the Eels, I think they bounce back. Dolphins haven't been playing too good as of late. I expect a good performance from him there. Again, the thing with Sean Johnson, if he's not assisting, which he always is, he assisted all of the Warriors tries last week, if he's not assisting them, he's slotting them over from a goal. Actually, he kicked a lot of shit last week, but normally he's slotting them over. So I really like the idea. I'm very tempted to do it. I might do it. I don't know. It is very, again, team and trade dependent because a round 27 buy is killer. And I think that's the reason I can't do it in, in my super coach state uh, sense of things. But 
if you, as I said, if you were looking to, you know, trade in a halfback, if you needed numbers, like if Sam Walker's out and you really need numbers, and you can get him in and out, go Sean Johnson, do it. Trust in the one last ride. He will, he will pay off for you. He's he's the GOAT. So, Sean Johnson, it's not the most compelling case. It's a lot of a vibe pick, but sometimes Supercoach is all about the vibes. So, Sean Johnson is our pod by number one. Number two, Philip Sami. A lot of people are left thin this week with the Roosters buy, and Dom Young is proving a popular trade-out with the injury. While I do advise holding Young, if you need numbers or just a pod play to give yourself the edge in head-to-head finals, then I love a Phil Sammy play. At a crazy 0.3% ownership, Sammy has been unreal for the Titans in uh, recently, averaging 82 points per game across his last three games, with 42 points in base across his last six games. The Titans are still a chance of finals and will be looking to soar home. And with no buys to come, I think Sami will prove an almighty pod purchase. This is the definition of pod. 0% owned is crazy. Uh, I, I really like the idea, to be honest. Look, it's not the easiest run of games. They still have Roosters and Penrith and even Sharkies in there. Uh, in saying that, Roosters' defense has been atrocious, so I'm not sure that's really a game you're scared of. Sharkies this week without Braden Trindle and Nico Hines. I'd be hedging my bets. I'll be tipping the Titans. And then you've still got Dragons and Knights, so you never really know what they're going to throw up. Panthers at home in the final game. Every chance Panthers rest for that one as well. So I think it's a very good run for Philip Sami. I think his base is insane. So you're never really worried about him going low. And I think he can pull out those good scores, as he has been. He's coming off a 100-point performance. So I really like it as a pod play. It might give you the massive edge to edge in finals that you that you need. And he could even, even as a um, overall player, I think he's a, worth a great shout. If you're a little bit behind the pack and you want someone to just edge you forward, maybe trust in Phil Sammy. So yeah, Phil Sammy, second pod buy of the week. And lastly, Patrick Carrigan. At 15% ownership, Carrigan is on the higher end of the pod category but I couldn't leave him off the list after the Payne Haas injury. If you, have the jewel, if you have the jewels to move Haas to Carrigan, I think it's a go. Last week, he punched out 75 points in an 80-minute effort, and he will be required to do that every game for the Broncos from here on out. To get someone who could average 70-plus on the way home for only 500k is too good to be true. The only negatives I have are his upcoming buy and lack of upside, but I, but I for one, am, am very interested. We mentioned Cameron Murray last week. Cameron Murray didn't put out the score that Patrick Carrigan did, but Cameron Murray also doesn't have a buy to come. They're very similarly priced, so it's a, it's a toss-up between them. It's not just for the pain and house injury, and if you have the jewels to do so, but if you need to get someone like Eli Katoa out of the side, depending on his injury, or maybe you just don't, if you have Trace do it and you're not feeling Britain Nicola anymore, or whatever it is, 536k for Pat Carrigan, who bases almost 60, you can see that up on screen. I think that's mental, and uh, maybe there's a little bit bias in him because I love him as well, but I think that's a great, great trade option. But here's our third and final pod buy for the week. Let me know if you get around any of those, and as I said, go have a look on the Instagram and show the post some love. A lot of work goes into these ones. Let's get back to my team specifically and what we're doing. So as we've talked about for a long, long time, we've had this trade option in mind. Now, we went in last week, uh, a bit of risk behind it. We needed Kalen Ponga to go sub 78 points so I could afford him in one trade to do Ronaldo Militalo to him this week. Thankfully, Kalen Ponga did just that. So at least our first trade, whether or not we do one, we'll have to get to. At least our first one is Ronaldo out, Cal Elo moving back into the center wing, and Kalen Ponga coming in at fullback. There it is. Now, let's, yeah, the other only trade option is something I've already mentioned, and that's the Dom Young to Zach Lomax one. Now, as I said, I'm more overall focused, and from an overall standpoint, I don't think I need to. It's just one week where I'm without my Roosters players. I still have the depth to play. Whether or not I'm really interested in playing Jai Gray against the Storm is a different story, but I can if I need to. However... I also want to win head-to-head. Uh, so Domi Young to Zach Lomax is something I'm really interested in. As I said, I can do it in one hit. Let's just toy with it now. Trade uh, and sort by average. 
Zach Lomax is the second highest averaging play, uh, center wing this entire season behind Valentine Holmes. He averages more than Dom Young, though Dom Young has had a few very low ones with injury and getting sent off and stuff. He's at 667k, Zach Lomax. Dragons have a decent run, I believe. Did we already look at this? I can't remember if we looked at it. Uh, Dragons have no buys to come, and they have, wow, Bulldogs, which could be decently tough, but it's a sold-out Cogra. I think Dragons put up a great fight. Then it's Titans, who can still leak points. Sharks, who are, who knows? And then Eels and Raiders. So I really want to do the Zach Lomax trade. I wish I had more trades. I'd pull the trigger in a heartbeat. I think I'm not going to do it simply because I've only got the two left now. And I really want to trade the uh, save them for chaos. You know, as I said, if Harry Grant goes down or is rested, I have to use a trade there because I have no other hooker. You know, so I think I'm not going to do it, but I really wish I could. If you have any more than two trades, I'd do it. But... As I said, I'm going to trust in the depth. It's going to be a tough week this week. Maybe we drop a little bit. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping the players that we do play just, you know, step up. But, yeah, I really wish I could pull off that Zach Lomax trade. This is where saving trades comes in very handy. So we obviously went hard for a reason, and it's worked out, but we'll have to see how much further it gets me. That is the one trade I'll do this week, then. That is the Ronaldo Mortalo to Kalen Ponga. So let's look at sit V starts before we get into captains. Now, it's made pretty easy this week, as I said, with the lack of roosters. So my wingers, let's start with them. Ruben Garrick comes back into the side after being named. Dominic Young drops out. Sam Walker, we're taking a reserve off you because you're out. Angus Crichton drops out, but Homolei Olakowatu's back, which is perfect. Uh, Bo Fermor out with an injury. We take a reserve off you. Viliami Fafita, we're not playing you. Uh, let's leave it at that because of your, well, you don't play. And then let's look at our reserves and whatnot. Now, Josh Curran... With the news that he might be in a bit of doubt, when do the Bulldogs play? Third last game. They actually versus the Dragons. So I'm actually not in any world of hurt to play someone there. At the moment, I'll just leave Josh Curran as my front rower, potentially. Because, yeah, if I need to play Jack DeBellin, they're on the same game. I can just switch them and I'll just wait. I have more confidence in Josh Curran putting up a good score if he's playing but if he's a laid out, luckily, I can just swing him over to Jack DeBellin. Uh, the other thing there is Viliama Fafita, who's my be- best enough. Um, he also plays on that game. So I can leave it late to choose whether I'm uh, looping or whether I'm playing Curran or DeBellin. So that one doesn't really matter to me too much. So let's sort out our reserves. Kalen Ponga gets one. Actually, Kalen Ponga will start over Reese Walsh and Reese Walsh can have one. And I think at the moment I'll put a captain on Callum Ponga, but we'll come to captains in a second. Reese Walsh gets one. Casey McLean gets one reserve. Then we have to split up our last two. Cal Ido gets one. And then it's Jai Gray or Jack DeBellin. I think I'd be more confident in Jack DeBellin. Now, as again, this is all dependent on Curran playing. If Curran's laid out and I have to start Jack DeBellin then I only have Jai Gray as my other option as a playing reserve. However, you know, if um, my vice captain this week goes decent, like I'm thinking 90, I will probably just loop and then I'll cop Jai Gray as my AE or I cop him as my last reserve. So at least I can bank in a 90 um, captain, which is is decent. You know, if my captain goes massive from then on, uh, Tough tits, but we'll, we'll work with that. So that's our reserves. We're looking at Jack DeBellin, uh, Kayla Ido, Casey McLean, and Reese Walsh. Let's look at captains this week. Now, a lot of good ones. Last week was a tough sort of one. I think this week's quite good. Starting with the Rabbitohs and the uh, Melbourne Storm, I couldn't I couldn't really trust in Ryan Pappenhausen after his 11-point score and just the injury he's been carrying. If you still own him, it's maybe worth a VC if you've got no other better options, Um, but I can't really trust too much on that. Beyond that, you could do a Jerome Hughes or a Cameron Munster, but if you're doing Hughes, it locks you out of a Cleary if you own both. Uh, And Cameron Munster is good, but I don't know how many massive ones he has in him. It's worth a VC if you do own him and you want to pull that off. Uh, next game, Titan, yeah, and sorry, Rabbitohs, not touching any VCs there or captains there. 
Uh, Titans and Sharkies options here. A little bit. I mean, I'm very tempted in Titans players as vice captains at the moment, whether it's a Jaden Campbell or a Dave Fafita. Again, this is a Shark side who's without Nico Hines and now Braden Trindle. So half in their halves is going to be tough. Now, they did beat Melbourne playing some gritty footy when they had this similar thing happen earlier. Whether or not they can do that again against the red hot Titans side, we'll have to see. But uh, David Fafita and Jaden Campbell are options. If you're a Keanu Kinney owner, also a great option. I sort of wish I jumped on him when I did, but the game's a game. And, and I ended up with uh, Campbell, who I'm pretty happy with regardless. Uh, moving into the next game, Parramatta versus the Panthers. This is the best option probably for the round. And that's a vice captain or even a straight C if you are feeling so way inclined on Nathan Cleary. For me, I'm probably looking to use the vice captain on Cleary here and uh, a, a captain a little bit later in the um, in the week. But yeah, this one just makes sense. It's Nathan Cleary against the second worst team in the competition. Just load up. Uh, next up, Raiders and Seagulls. Now, if you wanted to put the VC on Nathan Cleary and uh, the captain on a Tom Trebojevic, that makes a lot of sense as well. I, of course, am not in the boat of owning a Tom Trebojevic, so that doesn't really make any difference to me. But Tom Trebojevic against the Canberra Raiders is a really good option fresh off the buy. In saying that, I think the Raiders get up for it. They're still in, uh, in with a chance of finals. And uh, this one's in Canberra. They will probably grind mainly down into a, a gritty little contest, and we'll have to see how much Turbo can really get out there. But it's Tom Trebojevic. He's a special, special player. So I really like the captain option on him. Uh, Broncos and, well, Cowboys versus Broncos. Sorry, it's a Cowboys home game. Valentine Holmes, Scott Drinkwater are worth considering. But I think there's just too many better options this week that I won't be going with either of them. Not that I own Drinky, but I won't be going with a Val this week. But I don't hate the option if you want to go something a little bit different. Dragons, Bulldogs, not really any options there. Uh, they're playing, both teams are playing some really, really good footy. But they've never really had captain options uh, this entire season. Maybe a Zach Lomax. But again, I think there are better options this week that I wouldn't do it. Dolphins, Warriors, nothing there I'd touch. Uh, and lastly, Knights and Tigers. This is where my captain comes. It's a McDonald Jones Stadium, so a Newcastle home game. This is the Kalen Ponga captaincy. I bring him into the side and I captain him. All dependent on the Josh Curran and Jack DeBell and stuff. Because genuinely, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. If, if Cleary goes low as my vice captain, then I'll just play Dry Gray as a reserve. If Cleary goes high as my vice captain, then I loop and get... Dry Gray as an AE, so it doesn't really matter for me. But having two bites of the cherry with Nathan Cleary and Kalen Ponga this week and relatively safe with no astronomical AE, uh, Dry Gray could go low against Melbourne, sure, but it's either I play him or I get him as an AE anyway at the moment this week. So I'm pretty happy with the vice captain on Cleary and captain on Ponga. That is a really solid week of uh, captains. So that is where I am sitting and you know what? That wraps us up. So once again, we'll be continuing these all for the rest of the season. Let me go, let me know if you're watching this one or if you're following the Instagram. If you're not, if you're watching this one and you aren't following me on Instagram, go and do so. I've got a lot more content there, and it's where you can you can engage with me a lot better. But let me know what sort of stuff you want to see, not just for the rest of this season, but next season, and also of the off-season. I would like to keep relatively active. I don't know how active I can be with um, you know no footy and, and what sort of news and what content I create. But if you have ideas for stuff that you want to see over the off season, let me know and we'll make that a possibility because I'd really like to keep something going over that off season. Once again, that is over on the Instagram. Let me know there. That is at Chip and Chase Podcast. But that wraps us up for this week. So good luck to all of you in your head-to-head -head finals if you made it and in your overall rankings for the rest of the season. Uh, yeah, good luck to you. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.